It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'll be responding to a speech that is called The Psychopathic Problem of the White Mind, where pretty much a psychiatrist goes into some sort of insane ramblings about white people and how basically she has dreams of wanting to kill white people with a revolver. Now before we respond to the speech, let's get some sort of historical background to give you guys an idea of all the sort of stuff that's been happening at Yale University. This is the exact flyer that's been passed around, so without further hesitation, let's read it out loud. Child Studies Center Grounds Rounds, presented by Yale School of Medicine Department of Child Studies Center, the psychopathic problem with the white mind. And of course, it's done by a person named Aruna Kalanali, MD, MA, who is a psychologist and a psychoanalogist. And the day for the whole entire speech was on April the 6th, 2021, at 1 o'clock, and it was presented via Zoom. Accreditation. The Yale School Center of Medicine is accredited by the Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education to provide continuing medical education for physicians. Target audience. Trainees in, in child psychology and social work, facility, clientists, and scientists. Learning objective. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to set out white people absence of empathy towards black races or problem, understand how racism is part of the mind, that white mind that arose during colonization with a series of lies around violence, understand how white people are psychologically dependent on, white, on black rage. Needs assessments. Everyone is talking about race right now, especially white people, and yet white people seem to be losing it. The amount of care and it's my right not to wear a mask videos are exploding. How do we understand it psychologically? It is the policy of Yale School of Medicine continuing medical education to ensure balance, independence, objectivity, and scientific rigor in all of its educational programs. All facility participating as speakers in these programs are required to disclose any relevant financial relationships they or spouse or a partner have with a commercial entrance that benefit the individual in any financial amount that has occurred within the past 12 months and the opportunity to affect the content of the CME about the products or services of commercial entrance. The Center of Continuing Medical Education will ensure that any conflicts of entrance are resolved before the educational activity occurs. As you guys can see by the flyer, this whole entire thing was sponsored by Yale University, and more or less, it has this whole entire statement, which pretty much states that people who attend this sort of lecture in the medical department should get some sort of credit for participating in this sort of stuff. And so without further hesitation, Let's react to the video at hand and see this how bad the statements are for the whole entire speech. I spent years unpacking her racism to her while she charged me cash money for years. And then she'd attempt to quote, teach me because she had concern about my anger. I couldn't get her to shut the fuck up. This is the cost of talking to white people at all. The cost of your own life is they stuff you dry. There are no good apples out there. White people make my blood boil. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, daring their body, and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away relatively gentlet. With a bounce in my step, like I did the world of fucking things. First and foremost, I'm gonna state the obvious. Can you guys possibly imagine if somebody has some sort of speech that is called the psychological mindset of the black mind or the Jewish mind or X amount of race because I hate to compare everything to you know Nazi Germany because it seems as though that people just you know use Nazi Germany for everything nowadays but if you replace the word white people with Jew or black or whatever then you get yourself a whole entire quotation that comes directly from Mein Kampf. Seriously, this sort of 
dehumanization of a whole entire group of people saying that there is no such thing as a good white person, like there is no such person that actually exists, is one of the steps that, of course, Adolf Hitler used to justify concentration camps against the Jews. So, honestly, the whole entire statement seems no far-fetched than some crazy alt-writer would say in front of minorities, right? And so, honestly, there's this whole entire skit that was called Racist vs. Woke. Now, there are some people who criticize the skit saying that it's exaggerated. But guys, look, here we have this woman who is completely out of her mind, who wishes to kill white people in her dreams just because she does not like white people. That to me is very scary and honestly no different than the racists that would possibly say such nonsense like, or like the people who are Nazis would say such nonsense. But let's go on. Some people have been out of their minds since Western colonialism. It was the worst violence the world has ever seen. The comments about Western colonization I find to be particularly interesting because for starters, it seems as though that a lot of these activists for social justice always think that colonization started with European countries. And so it probably just, for them, started with the British people, with the Spaniards, with the Portuguese, and these other European groups that landed to the Americas. However, that is not true in the slightest. Prior to European colonization, other people were colonizing each other. Of course, the Arabs started to colonize, like, you know, modern-day Arabia, and then, of course, like, there's a whole entire Roman Empire, where Europeans, of course, colonized each other to form the whole entire, Europe, like, the whole entire state, right? And, of course, these other African countries probably have, so, like, I cannot think of a single person or a single thing that has not been colonized at this point. And so, if you're gonna blame the West for colonization, you too should also acknowledge the colonization that was done by other groups of people across different nations that we know today. White people tell themselves that they are the superheroes of the world. They started this lie to justify their violence. I'm gonna call the superhero identity white goodness. It is the mask of a psychopath. White people don't know they are wearing a mask because usually psychopaths don't know that they're psychopaths. So now white people have violently inverted reality for years to continue to see themselves as the world's superheroes. It's grand management at the point. Psychopaths are bullies because they have no self-esteem. <gasps> ah, 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 ah. Oh my god, this is so much freaking projections here. <laughs> yes, it's true. You do, in fact, have, like, low self-esteem to hate on an entire race of people just because you don't like... Oh, my God, this is so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. So white people are out of their minds, and they have been for a long time. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they are a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. It ain't gonna happen. They have five holes in their brain. It's like banging your head against a brick wall, just like sort of not a good idea. It's impossible to talk about race because we are talking to psychopaths. Psychopaths are psychologically, psychological bullies because they actually have no self-esteem. <laughs> of violent predators. Oh my God. Like I remember like back in the 90s, there was this sort of scare about black predators or whatever by people such as Clinton. And so, looking back at it now, it was like, you know, super bad, super racist to say that, of course, like, you know, people who committed crime who happen to be black. And here she has, like, this whole entire opposite of, like, you know, the black predator that was in the 90s to the white predator. And this is how racism actually, you know, spreads. By this sort of language. Because to me, you cannot necessarily fight fire with fire. You may think that what happened in the past is unjustified. But guess what? The past and what happens in this country shouldn't justify hatred, 
Like, there's this whole entire saying that, you know, violence begat violence and so on. If you continue to hold on to the past, how are you going to actually, you know, try to fulfill your own purpose in life if you just keep trying to hang on to the past? Because the people today are not guilty of past actions, and the people today should be judged individually based upon their actions. And so to me, it is not fair to lump all white people as predators, to sit here and say that you want to shoot up all white people in your dreams. To me, it seems as though that this whole entire rhetoric about hating white people has been going on for a long time. And this kind of speech is because our culture openly allows hatred of white people all the time. I started to notice sort of this hatred of white people back in 2015 with news stations like MTV News and so on and BuzzFeed. And from there on out, it's gotten worse ever since the death of George Floyd. Now, back in the past, Martin Luther King stated that he wants people to judge each other based upon their character and not their skin color. Here we have social justice activists openly stating that you need to not be colorblind, that colorblindness should not actually happen. That to me, and all this sort of stuff that's been happening since 2015, is the main reason why speeches like this are even allowed. They're all image. White people turn the tables on us when we directly bring up race because they feel threatened. They're grasping at that last shred of imagined self-esteem. White people feel like everything is unfair for them, especially self-examination. White people ain't really requesting empathy. They want sympathy. And it's not that white people won't speak to us about the racism that took place. It's actually that they can't. It's a psychological limitation of their minds. Otherwise, what the white do would be staring them in the face, and that would be rude. White people put Eric Garner in a chokehold while he suffocated, and his life slowly left him, but it's not violent. It's a gentle neck massage. It's not necessarily white people's fault that Eric Gardner has died at the hands of the police. Look, there's a conversation to be had about police brutality in this country, and not just for black people, but for white people too, and all these other minorities and groups that live in the United States. There's that conversation to be had about reform and how we could actually better train our police officer. I completely understand it. However, the action of one person should not reflect the actions of many people. Those police officers that what happened to Eric Gardner, yes, they're the responsible ones. Yes, of course, I do in fact believe that any police officer who does that kind of brutality against a human being should have some sort of justice against them. I understand that. At the same time, I'm not gonna sit here and say, well, you see, all white people want to have some sort of police brutality. No, I am not going to say that. Because I know that individuals happen to do individual things and we should treat them as such. They are terrified to really level the playing field. Because it's the first time that white people have ever really had to compete. And they don't know if they can. White people have never earned shit a day in their life. They've had centuries of rigging the game. You know that Shakespeare is a decent rhymer in some circles, but if he battled Thorn Hill or Snoop Dogg or Biggie, well, he would lose, and in a big way. They rigged the game to control the canon because they could never really compete on the world stage. That is totally not true. Totally not true. Because like with black people or any other race of people, and I really hate using collectives in this video. But yes, there have been in fact white people who have contributed to humanities as we know it today. The modern day scientific method that we know comes directly from ancient Greece. Many of these movies that we watch nowadays also originated in like, you know, places in European countries. The many inventions, of course, were invented by white people. The arts have been contributed by various white nations and so on. 
many people who won the Nobel Peace Prize happen to be white people too. And so yes, there has been many people who were white who competed on the world stage and actually won based upon their personal merit. Just like there are other races who can also do these things like everybody else. But the thing is so, we should stop looking at each other as black or white or Asian or Hispanic. What we should really look at, at each other, to me at least, is basically you're human, I'm a human, let's get along together. White people have structured their entire worldview around not seeing their violence and entitlement. History is basically like fan fiction for white people to marvel at what, how amazing they are. White people have lost everything we have. White people have destroyed everything we have. And they don't want black people to know. I'm curious. If white people do not want people of color, I hate that term, people of color, not to know about like the historical atrocities that happened in the past, why is that Western nations, including the United States, talk about the atrocities? Particularly in the United States, we have, of course, history class, and we go, of course, after like what happened in the past in the United States, especially with slavery. I'm telling you guys, if they do not want like if a majority white country like the United States does not want to teach, you know, people of color about the atrocities, how come we're learning about it in our school systems? I'm just saying. They're cold and calculating because they never own their own shit. They seriously have no negative emotions. Which is why all white people are chillingly racist. Objective. Yeah, objectivity, yeah, it's totally a white thing. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. If you guys are interested in seeing the entire speech, I'll post the link in the description box down below for you guys to see it. But yeah, as you guys can see, this whole entire rambling from this woman is just no different than what someone like Adolf Hitler would say about the Jews and Nazi Germany. Every time she says something bad about white people, just replace it with Jew, replace it with black person, and guess what? You got yourself a whole entire novel of Minecraft. What do you guys think about this uh, speech? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend.